could just relax, sit back. You don't have to take any notes, no necessity for paper, pen. When I'm sharing my stories, try to think back at your own experiences and see if you can draw some parallels out of it. Whether you can draw some meaning out of, of your own experiences, like just I did, and whether you can take it forward in your life. This learning of leadership is not restricted only to Toastmasters. I have experienced the benefits in and outside Toastmasters. So I would like to say what you learn in Toastmasters is nothing but life leadership. It gives you the strength and the confidence to live life like a leader. Now I have told you this is going to be a very very informal get together. So I want you to choose a partner. The only condition is he or she should be as unfamiliar to you as possible. So don't go across the room trying to find your enemy or strangers. Just to try to restrict your search for to somebody who is in front of you or behind you or next to you. Try to see that he or she is as unfamiliar to you as possible. Okay? Everybody fair enough? If you'd like to change seats, do it simply. Introduce yourself to your partner. He or she is going to be your buddy for the next 30 minutes. Tanya? Who's the Tanya? Okay, I'll be done. Please exchange your names and nothing more. So the reason for this is a leader has to be uncomfortable dealing with strangers. If you are not able to feel comfortable in company of people whom you do not know, that is the biggest barrier for you in your relationship journey. Okay, are we done? There's a lot of interaction going on between the new form buddies. Can we please sit down? Okay, great. So is there somebody who doesn't have a buddy now? So everybody you have found your partners? Okay. Now I would like you to think about this term. Who is a non-leader? How do you define a non-leader? So some of you might have heard this for the first time today. But just think about it. Who is a non-leader? Give a definition and please share your definition with your buddy. Two minutes, one minute each. Timer, please let me know when one minute is up. Your definition of a non-leader. Just time starts now.
was the meaning of a non-leader. I think he says it's somebody who's of no use to society. <laughs>
have to speak about such topics only which you completely believe in. If you do not believe in what I say, don't speak about it. That is again very difficult. I'll give you an example. I have prepared an excellent topic about dental hygiene. I think it was project 6 or 7. <laughs> and I went to him and said, see this is the speech I am going to give you. How is it? He said, no. He said, why? You cannot give a speech like this. Why? Are you a dentist? He said, no, but I am a long-standing patient. <laughs> and in Canada there is a saying something like this, an old patient is better than a new doctor. <laughs> So I, I thought I had every right to speak about it. He said, no. So I had to scrap that wonderful speech and to rewrite an entire new speech about coffee which I presented. Now by the time I completed my CC, I had prepared and presented 10 powerful speeches on topics which were very, very close to my heart. Those topics were those which I completely believed in, I felt one with, and felt very passionate about it. And then I could see the difference. When I was speaking, people were actually listening. And when I was speaking, they were believing in what I was saying. So I got a feeling that, yes, what I say is worth listening to. And it's making sense to people. And that was the start of my self-belief. It actually gave me a feeling that I'm a worthy person. What I say is valuable to people. And that self-belief, self-confidence was the beginning of my education journey. So I would like you to take a moment, just close your eyes and think back about your own experience. When was that exact moment when you experienced this great acceleration that you are a worthy person? What you say is worthwhile for others. Was it when you gave your icebreaker, when you gave your project time? or when you won that first table topic ribbon, or maybe when you won your speech contest first time. So just think about it, get in touch with that feeling, and please share that moment with your partner. You have to meet.
Where's the mic? Bad. Hello, this is Nasima, my partner Abdul. I was giving my project too, and uh, that was really a very good one, where I could uh, speak on the favorite topic of teaching, because I came from the teaching background, and I really liked it, giving my experience, I mean, the whole of experience for the hand of teaching to the audience. Very good man. So that really motivated me, and I am going forward with the uh, third page. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, hello, my name is Abdul. Uh, when I was giving ice cutter, I was very uh, a bit nervous. So what I planned was to get out of that nervousness, fear. So only the way you can get out of it is practice. So when I took a second project. I gave it at my Express to Lead Club, then I gave it at post the same project at Kaur Mandala Club and the same project at IIMB Bangalore. So that gave me an opportunity to interact with a different audience and it took away my fear of standing on the stage and delivering the speech. And that helped me in the my third speech as well. I think I am a bit uh, confident compared to the first project. This is how I got rid of my... Uh, or you can say a bit of fear. Still, it is going on. So, 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 what happens here is not just that you lose the fear of public speaking. Actually, you gain confidence in your own self. There is a certain kind of validation about your self-worth. So, you validate yourself as a person worthy to be heard of, worthy to lead other people. Now, in the next Two years, I think I took two years to complete my CC. I was taking different meeting roles and I was bringing the same kind of sincerity to all the roles I played, whatever be the meeting roles. Now, this was noticed by the seniors of my art communication club. So, slowly they developed a confidence about me and they thought, okay, we can experiment with this person, we can make him the president of the club because he will not let us down. He may not know everything, but at least he will try it sincerely. You know that sincerity of purpose was something which differentiated me from others. I think this is true for all clubs. Haven't you noticed in your own clubs? Suppose you are looking for a prospective president. You look for a person with dedication and commitment more than talent or flamboyance. Because you need somebody who can stand by the club and live by it, right? So, this kind of authenticity is what gives credibility to a leader. When a person can walk the talk, when he says something, when he promises something and he keeps up his promise, at least he will try it genuinely, that increases the credibility and over a period of time, slowly he rises as a leader. There was something else I experienced when I was the president of Macon Communication Club. I was the first non mechani to be elected as its president. And what I observed was my effectiveness as a leader was not dependent on me alone. There was a system to back me up. Now that was a big realization for me as a leader. A leader is as effective as the system which backs me up. You know, if you take a leadership manual, you have every role clearly defined and the role itself is broken down into executable tasks and it can be measured. For example, what's that for? Okay. So, for example, you have VPE role, VPE membership, VPE PR. So, VPE has to assign interns, he has to uh, change CCs, VP membership has to get 8 new members, VPPR has to publish uh, 2 newsletters. So, there, there are tasks which are supposed to be done by the team members. And leader, all he has to do is to provide the resources, remove the roadblocks, give the 
what they require, motivation, set expectations and let them work. Now it's very very important for you to succeed as a leader, you have to understand the system. And in case a system does not exist, you have to create it. You know, this was a paradigm shift for me. I didn't understand this earlier. To convert enthusiasm into results, you have to convert groups into teams. What's a group? A group is a collection of people which has a common need or a desire. And the same group can be converted into a team if you clearly define the roles and objectives of each member. If you have milestones, documents the progress, you have a system in place. And when the system is there, you can be assured of success. So please remember, you are only as effective as the system which you have created or which you are implementing. After my role as the president, I was uh, in Sri Lanka. It was the first time divisions were being formed and uh, district government was uh, Mr. Bosco Abraham. So he selected me as the first division to be governor. Now why I was selected, I don't know. Probably. <laughs> now it could be because uh, he saw something in me, probably because of my credibility or maybe I was circulating uh, among different clubs or maybe I was seen as a person who was walking the talk. So I was installed as a division governor. And little did I know that there were some people who were unhappy at my elevation. Now there were a lot of uh, seniors who felt left out, who were frustrated, uh, they were upset. Now this happens, this is one of the pitfalls of leadership. When you become a leader, you are bound to offend some people without even doing anything. You don't have to do anything, but some people are unhappy about it. It's a fact of life. Okay, one of the main responsibilities of the division governor was to conduct a division conference. Now as you know the contest goes like this, the people, the contestants move from club level to area level to division level. This was explained and area contest was done. Ten days before the division contest, I get a call from one of the clubs. The president says, Nagaraj, we didn't know that the area level winner will go to the division level. We sent our contestant to the area level, whoever was available, of course they didn't win. Now we are told that the area level winners will go to the division level. Now if we had known that earlier, we would have sent our best speakers. We have so many great speakers in our club. I said, uh, how is it possible? I cannot change the rules now. No, 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 it is a mistake of your area governors who did not give us the proper information. So you have to make an exception. You have to allow our speaker to speak at the division level. Now I checked with my area governor. He said, this information has been given. I had to trust my area governor because he is my teammate. And I called him up and said, I called the president and said, sorry, we cannot change the rules. So he was very upset. He said, uh, this is not done. We are going to protest during the division conference. We are going to raise our voice. So there was every possibility that the division conference might have been disrupted. I consulted other people and uh, none of them wanted to take his time. None of them wanted to offend anybody else. So it was then I realized the meaning of this phrase, it's lonely at the top. <laughs> you know, when, when there's, there's always going to be a dilemma, there's always going to be a conflict, and times you have to face the ethical paradoxes yourself. There will be conflicts, and every leader, I'm sure, would experience this one time or another, where they are left to fend for themselves. Because you have to take that crucial, one crucial decision and there is nobody else to be blamed. So I went back to my silence and just sat silently and decided to go by the rules. I said, whatever happens, let me face it. And I conveyed the same to the club president. He was very upset. But fortunately, when the D-Day came, nothing untoward happened. Probably because of the high level of enthusiasm or comradely present in the call that day, so nobody raised any protest, everything went off smoothly. But the lesson remains to this day. You are lonely at the top and leadership, thy name is solitude. The success of division conference made me a natural choice to head the district conference next year. So I became the chairman of Innovation 2008. 
Now, there is a beautiful manual called High Performance Leadership Manual in Toastmasters, and I use that to run that conference. It is such a beautiful document. It taught me how to create a vision, a vision statement, break that down to goals, and create teams, motivate people, have milestones, measure their success, take critical feedback, make mid-course corrections, and achieve results. This was something which I found extremely useful in my journey as the chairman of Innovation 2008. But there was something which was not written in any manual. There was something which is not written in any book which I experienced. Ask anyone who has been a part of Innovation 2008. It was pure magic. Over 70 volunteers worked together as if they were part of the same family arranging their sister's wedding. Some of them in the final days, some of them didn't eat, some of them did not sleep, and in the end when it was all over, all of them hugged each other and cried. That was the kind of magic which was created. And the reason was, I created a framework where the desired results were clearly expressed, and I gave them the freedom to experiment. That unleashed their creativity. You actually don't know what your teammates can do. If you trust them enough, and if you give them the freedom to experiment and come up with different options, they will amaze you with the kind of extraordinary results they can achieve. Because they know that the leader trusts them, and they don't want to let down the leader. Now when the purpose of the leader and the team are aligned, what happens is synergy. And synergy is pure magic, which I'm sure you have experienced in your journey of those master's leadership. <coughs> Next came my journey as LGET under Deepak Menon. He was the district governor and I was the LGET. Probably it was the toughest part of my life because he was such a hard taskmaster, I had to literally keep running just to keep pace with him. He was, he's, he is a Wikipedia of course masters and he is a stickler for details. I had the maximum learning how to run a district under him. But there was something else which he gave me, a very beautiful gift. That was a knowledge how to differentiate between facts and opinions. He taught me how to differentiate between emotions and ideas. Early into that, I was a person who always took decisions based on my heart. He said that won't work. You have to take decisions based on your head. This is something I learned from him. You know, uh, we have a member called uh, Lemmy Obert who gives this example which drives home the point very effectively. And I have taken his permission to share this with you today. He uses this in table topics. He said, one day, there was a speaker talking about male pattern bodies. The speaker was saying, men who are bald in the front are sexy. Men who are bald in the back are thinkers. So Mr. Bhatt gets up and asks, sir, what about me who are bald both sides? <laughs> so the answer was, you people think you are sexy. <laughs> now, now, in Toastmasters, we have a lot of people who think they are sexy and smart. And the irony is that they think, and actually they are convinced that you are a complete idiot. So, whatever role you are taking, whatever be your leadership role, you will have one such person in your team who thinks you are an idiot, you don't know anything, and he or she should have been the leader in state in your place. So the trick is, you have to learn how to deal with such people. You have to take them with you, because you can neither wish them away or switch them away, it's a part of life. So you get along with them, take them along with you, see that you are not disrupted. Now let's have a quick recap. Can anyone tell us the six principles you have learned so far? Self-belief. Right? Authenticity gives you credibility. Create a system. It's always alone at the top. Synergy is magic. And learn to deal with difficult people. Now, the, the question is, what is the use of these leadership lessons if they are applicable only to Toastmasters? Now, are they applicable to other areas of your life? Is it really life learning? Is it really life leadership? I would like to share my own experience. So when I was the club president, some of you might know this, I finished
finished my engineering in 1988 and I joined our family business. It was a very small firm at that time. We were very, very eager to take it to the next level. So, we worked very hard, but unfortunately we couldn't succeed much. And we realized the difference was, we didn't have a differentiator between us and our competitors. The only way we could get ahead was to get better technology from abroad. Now, I, I did not have any experience working in corporates. I have never worked anywhere, so that was my first business. I lacked the confidence to talk to foreign vendors. Those days, we didn't have emails. We had to call them and we, or we had to write to them. And I could not understand their accent. But my experience as president of Mekong Communication Club changed all that. If you have been to Mekong, you will notice that it's a very, very official environment. It's very corporate. People come in uh, suits and uh, Chairing those meetings actually gave me the confidence to talk to international vendors. And in 2006, our dream of getting imported machinery from Germany and Switzerland became a reality and we started with the conference. The division conference was so successful, people will tell you who have been there, that was the first time it established Toastmasters as a brand in Bangladesh. And then before that, people, non Toastmasters, did not know about Toastmasters. Now, this gave me a thought why not have a brand for our own product? So, we registered Bias as a brand name and we released it into the market. We had a brand launch in Purunanak Bhavan and I used the same principles for success. Have a vision, have convert it into goals, into executable tasks, create teams, motivate them and let the synergy happen. And this was successful, so successful. And what I would like to share with you, within two years, our sales doubled and profits tripled. That was the actual benefit we knowledge how to create a system and run the business as a system driven company. I think it was in late 2008, I think it was in December, a delegation from Costa Coffee UK came to India. They were looking for some kind of a tie with the local players. So when they met us, they, all they wanted was to do us some job roasting for them. Now, during the course of meetings, they were convinced that here was a person who knew how to create a system-driven business entity with clearly defined deliverables and processes. So at the end of the meeting, we shook hands and that was a big leap for us as a company because we became the sole manufacturers for Costa Coffee, which happens to be the third largest cafe chain in the world. And we continued to put systems in place and we became the first Indian coffee company to get the prestigious PRC certification and the following year we also got the national award for the best roaster silver award at the India International Coffee Convention. So the power of systems was directly translated to our business. My role as a district governor gave me an opportunity to deal with leaders who were by their own right, they had the confidence to lead other teams. I was talking to area governors, division governors, who had the experience of running their own conferences. And when I went abroad for the conventions, I was talking to LGBTs and district governors of various countries. So this sort of rounded off my experience. So I became very comfortable dealing with leaders, both domestic and foreign. Now 2011, there came a team from USA, Dunkin' Donuts, and they were searching for the right partners. We had a series of meetings which went off flawlessly, and at the end, again, we shook hands, we became the only coffee company outside the United States to have a manufacturing license for Dunkin' Donuts, which happens to be the second largest cafe chain in the world, next only to Starbucks. So, whatever I learned in Toastmasters, I have applied in my career and have reaped uh, re rich dividends. So, Toastmasters is a positive spiral which affects you in every area of your life and I would like to recommend that you take this up very seriously and translate the success to your career and your family. I would be happy to take any questions, we are running short of time, just one question. Or you can write to me. One question. Yes. What next? <laughs> you know, 
that's always a question. It's very good not to know what next. You, know, you never know what life has in store for you. And I never knew when I became the I completed my presidency one day. Bosco will appoint me as a division. So. So I'd like to close this presentation with a small story which is a favorite of mine. You now there are two families living next to each other, neighbors. One had children, the other did not. One day, the father of the children he came to the backyard, the front yard, and the kids wanted to grow a garden. So they, the children come out, there are toddlers less than five years old. They dig up the earth, plant the seeds, put manure, put it back, and pour some water. Next day they come out again, they are very curious, kids being kids. They dig up the earth and they are trying to see whether there is a small shoot growing up or a root uh, coming down. So the, they do that every day, day after day. And the father is just smiling and he is looking at them and he is happy. The neighbor loses his patience. He calls the father and says, Hey mister, what are, what are you doing? Is this the way to grow a garden? So he says, the father, Sir, I am not trying to grow a garden. I am trying to grow children. How else will they know if they do not make mistakes? So friends, whether you are running a club or a business or an organization, please remember, as a leader, you are trying to grow people. And people give you success. Thank you.